Hey guys, and welcome back to the Virtual Reality Show, where we talk about any and all things related to virtual reality inside virtual reality. <laughs> I'm your host, Fia. VR is an immersive and life-changing experience. When I first started playing VR, it changed my perception of the universe. It changed how I feel about everything around me. This isn't unlike the experiences of those who use psychedelics. Many people use psychedelics in party settings, but a large portion of people who engage with these chemicals do so because of the life-altering or therapeutic effects of it. There isn't a lot of research on the effects of psychedelics yet because of their illegal status, which has made it hard to get a scientific understanding of the medical pros and cons of using these types of substances. But what we do know is that humankind has been using psychedelics for thousands of years for a wide range of purposes. There's a really great Minefield video on Vsauce where Michael goes to Peru to go through a shamanic ritual where he drinks ayahuasca, which contains DMT. They talk about how it brings on self-healing and enlightenment. One of the most interesting experiences people can have on psychedelics is something called ego death, where during a trip, the drugs released chemicals will slow down the part of your brain responsible for your feelings of individuality. What occurs is this overwhelming sense of connectedness and unity with the world around you, specifically with life and nature. For many people, having a good trip that results in this ego death phenomena can change their life. New studies are showing that psychedelics can provide healing for those who suffer from PTSD or those who desperately feel like they need a restart on their life. Now, learning about these life-altering and intense feelings that psychedelics are able to bring to people, it, it parallels quite fluently with my experience of VR and how it's changed the way that I see the world around me. From being invested in all aspects of virtuality, it's become clear to me that there is a notable overlay of people who value psychedelics and people who value virtual cyberspace. This result of culture blending is something known as cyberdelics, and it's been around since the internet went mainstream. The leading figure of the cyberdelic movement is arguably Terence McKenna, a man who is a documented proponent of both psychedelics and VR as far back as the early 90s. So, as I've learned more and more about psychedelics, I've become really interested in finding the answers to two main questions that I've had. Firstly, what is it like to trip in VR? And secondly, could we possibly simulate a psychedelic trip in VR without the need for any substances? As a psychedelic virgin myself, I decided to go out and look for people who have taken things such as LSD, DMT, and psilocybin while immersed inside of a VR headset. I put out a call on my Instagram asking for people who've tried it to reach out to me, and I was surprised at the number of responses that I received. I spent a lot of time asking these people about their experiences and what it was like for them to gather my own data. There was a wide array of results from incredibly immersive, exciting experiences to some of the most traumatic and terrifying trips you could imagine. One of the people I talked to agreed to coming on the show to talk about his experience. Um, prior to doing it in VR at all, I had probably done it at least 100, 150 times. Uh, collectively in VR, like, I want to say in the 30s or so, something mm. like that. Yeah, lots. Uh, more more than I care to, like, admit to the average person. <laughs> From time one to the, to the final time, kind of give me a summary of, of what that was like. Like, did it change at all or was it pretty consistent? Um, okay, so overall, I had a very consistent experience, basically until I had tried Thumper VR with it. Um, up until then, I had been doing stuff like uh, the game Please Don't Touch Anything. It has a bunch of alternate endings. That's basically the whole point of the game is find a bunch of different endings. Um, I had done some horror experiences, just some generic stuff that was on a Three Degrees of Freedom headset. And then when I had gotten to the Six Degrees of Freedom, I tried out Thumper VR, which I had been playing that game for a long time while like tripping anyway. That's when I first played it was tripping on LSD um, probably three to six months earlier and then I had like the bad experience with it mm -hmm. it was unlike any other experience I'd had so it was like a completely unique negative experience at the time like 
as opposed to the other ones, which I would have said were like strictly positive. So the games that were more paced and you could kind of take at your own like rate, would you say mm -hmm. that those would like ultimately have a way better like experience? Yeah, I would say probably the biggest thing that would differentiate my negative experience from my positive ones was the lack of control over the situation. Mm -hmm. um, so like an, a standard experience with it, whether in VR or on your own, like uh, outside of VR would be very controlled and like you'd have a, a good amount of say over like what the environment is around you. Um, and the biggest defining factor of that negative experience would have been like I was completely out of the control of the situation. Like, like it was very intense and like much more high energy than I was interested in at that point. And it, when I went into it, I was interested in it, but coming out of it, obviously not. Right. Yeah. So tell, yeah. Me, <laughs> tell me a little more about like the um the immersion aspect. So, you know, from your your regular like everyday like playing VR experience, mm -hmm. you know, some people are obviously more immersed than others. Like especially with mm -hmm. like you know me when I put on my Index is a lot more immersive than I felt like with my Rift S. Um, yeah. So when you're tripping, how does that affect like the immersion aspect? Uh, the best way I could describe it is quite a lot like how I would describe my first experience with like Six Degrees of Freedom, which is like it is basically like stepping out of the room you're in and stepping directly into a new environment. It's almost like you're just there. So, yeah. So then my next question I want to ask a little bit about is um, kind of like ego death. And I know, mm -hmm. you know, lots of people when they when they experience psychedelics, um, especially for people who aren't necessarily doing it for partying and doing it for more, more like mm -hmm. the almost like spiritual aspects is um, the, the idea of ego death. Um, and so obviously since you've done it so many times in VR, what, what was your experience with that? Did you ever have an ego death within VR or experience any like of those ty same types of feelings? Um, okay, so the closest I ever would have gotten to that would have been my like very negative trip at the end, the very last time. Um, and I actually think, I think like it's kind of a common misconception about, um, about like psychedelics as a whole, like the ego death is the, the peak, like where you want to go. Mm -hmm. Um, I think there's a lot that can be explored in LSD and other, um, psychedelics that is not that. And I think that that's kind of territory that's talked about a lot that most people are not mentally prepared for. I kind of getting into the more like specific details of like how I felt that night. Yeah. Um, I would describe it as like, so I, I was playing the game uh, and experiencing like, oh, I'm just playing Thumper like I always do, which I had been playing for months. Um, and then at one point I thought to myself like, wow, this is getting really intense. And I said that out loud. Um, and my girlfriend was with me that night, uh, tripping with me. And she was like, oh, okay, well, like you can take a break if you need. I'm like, no, I'm good. And then moving forward, I was like, okay, like, this is like too intense. I thought in my head, like, mm. I don't know if I can, I was like, I keep having this rhythm pulse in my head. Like, I don't know if I can stop playing. So I just took the controllers and threw them off and just threw the whole thing off. I was like, I have to stop like right mm. now. And the, uh, of course, like when you, when you pause the game, normally it would just pause. Um, well, when you throw the controllers down, no. you die. <laughs> so if you have headphones and everything on, Mm. Uh, you have a really loud explosion sound and it's very aggressive. Mm. That's the best way to put it. Uh, so that happened. And then from then on out, that, this was probably, this is kind of near the peak of the experience. And then from then on out the rest of the night, it was just nonstop. Like I couldn't get the beat out of my head. I couldn't get the, the uh, tunneling like effect to stop everything in front of me was moving like that. Um, there was, how do I describe it? So I like went to go look at like my computer keyboard and the letters on the keyboard were like Egyptian hieroglyphics moving. Oh my God. Like, you know, uh, I, you've probably seen like Rick and Morty before. Yeah. Um, you know, when they have like alien touch screens in that show or like in any sci-fi-esque show and they have those weird moving characters on the screen that are like moving letters to like mm -hmm. represent an alien language. It was that, but on the keyboard. So I'm like, nope, not doing that. Um, sitting down on the couch, like looking at, uh, looking around the room, we had to take everything off the walls in the room to be completely blank. So that way it was the least stimulating environment mm -hmm. possible. Um, and then we ended up like, I, I was like looking at my girlfriend in the face and her face like, so, you know, when you look through a kaleidoscope and it's like, it splits literally like splits, like what, like reality would look like splits mm -hmm. on like lines. That was the experience, but in my eyes. So. Oh my 
So everything I'm looking at in the room is split like a mirror, like a cracked mirror. Mm. It, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's scary to like talk about it and like think about like I can remember it clear as day what it looked like. But like thinking about it now, like especially after having like kind of come to terms with it, mm-hmm. it is not scary now. Like if I were to ever face that again, it wouldn't be the same like intense horror I right. felt in that moment. And so like I'm glad like w- one thing it like definitely did is like it gave me a really good perspective on like life and myself like mm. my value of life specifically like I really value like following that experience I really valued like just my life as a whole I was like well I have like a lot of stuff to be thankful for and like I'm really happy about this and it's good to have that outlook like I wouldn't get rid of the experience mm-hmm. despite it being so horrible because mm-hmm. I feel like I would have gone further down that rabbit hole like of doing hard drugs and whatnot had I not had a negative experience. Like it's almost a good thing, like almost kind of like a blessing. Right, right, right. <laughs> uh, like despite it being like the worst night of my life, like I have a perspective <laughs> that I'll never, I never would have gotten from anything else. Mm. Like I wouldn't wish it on anyone, but like I kind of needed to have that experience to like get to a happy point in my life, you know? So for my interviewee, there were lots of good trips in VR, followed by one that was so horrific that it kept him away from tripping completely since. Other people I talked to also mentioned it being an overstimulating experience, as well as being extremely sensitive to the screen light in their face. Another person I talked to even mentioned that they had a friend who tried VR for the first time while tripping at a party and they had said it was the most nauseating experience of their life. What I learned is that, yes, doing psychedelics in VR can lead to an immensely immersive experience, which a lot of us VR fanatics really covet. But depending on your state of mind and the kind of games that you play, it can end up being a more horrific than a normally terrifying bad trip could ever be. So after I heard about these first-handed experiences, about what it's like, I decided to talk to a VR expert about it, Joachim from Alt-VR. I've talked to Joachim in the past about virtual embodiment, and I remember seeing on his channel that he had played some simulated psychedelic experience games himself, and had even interviewed cyberdelic lovers. I knew that I needed to ask him some questions to further my understanding of what our minds are truly capable of. Regarding the effects of psychedelics uh, as a general phenomenon, it usually has an effect on uh, the relationship between you as yourself, uh, who you are, and your relation to the world around you. Um, And this is, of course, where it gets weird, and people would say that it's hard to explain what actually happens and that you have to experience it. No, I think that's so interesting. And I think um, one of the reasons that that is so interesting is because You know, for the people that I have talked to who've done psychedelics and have experienced kind of this like life changing, like positive impact from them and being like, I see the world in a totally different way now. And the way that I experience things, I feel like I experienced that from the very first time I put on a VR headset is the the way I've perceived reality and perceived like the world around me has completely changed because of um, being in VR. And I think that's what makes it so interesting and making them so parallel is that connection right there. Just having that break, realizing that there is um, other ways of being, uh, other ways of uh, thinking about the world. So having your uh, worldview changed, that can be extremely powerful as an intervention. Uh, Yeah, and of course, an experience. There is a community of people who are doing this actively. um, And they are um, on a subreddit, which is called Rift Into the Mind. So I did an interview um, on my YouTube channel. Uh, I also run a podcast like the VR Philosophy Podcast, where I talked to this guy. And he said that uh, in his case, it was a couple of tabs of um, acid or LSD. And he was able to have a much more immersion into uh, the virtual world. Um, I think he was going to like uh, sort of like a dance party or some sort of musical. Uh, mm-hmm. I mean, like this, the things that are around us, it's, it's quite nice. Uh, these uh, colorful mm-hmm. um, psychedelic patterns. And he was really able to zone into that. And I mean, <laughs> taking virtual embodiment, like embodying as a virtual avatar to the next level. So for him, it was a really uh, awesome experience, at least. You know, I've talked to a few different people this past week and kind of just trying to get different perspectives and different, um, you know, stories and kind of what's going on. For some people, it was very immersive. It was like they're kind of 
you know, feeling like as if they were inside of VR truly, like their their brain was telling them like, like this is where I am, you know, what I'm seeing is, is what's real. Um, versus for some of the other people that I've talked to, um, their experience was completely different. And for them, they could never shake the feeling of being disconnected from the VR. And, and oh, wow. um, the light of the headset was something that they always were aware of. And they found it quite irritating to their eyes or whatnot. And they were never able to feel um, immersed. And it, it's really interesting to see how I think, um, how different people like experience different trips, you know, in real life, that kind of relates to how like, um, well-mannered you are in virtual reality and how much virtual reality you've experienced so far. Yeah. We may have some VR experiences that are designed to um, simulate the effects of psychedelics, but we don't necessarily have experiences that are meant or designed for to be enjoyed on psychedelics, mm. I mean, explicitly. So I think that would help um, if there was like designers actively trying to design ex um, like virtual environments for tripping specifically because set and setting is like the <laughs> ultimate saying within um, psychedelics right mm. uh, that you have to have um, an actually good set you need to be um, for instance in your uh, apartment or somewhere nice somewhere where you are able to feel safe so just being thrown into like a random virtual world could probably be very um, heavy for someone who is tripping on psychedelics mm -hmm. So I think that would help, um, and um, yeah. No, I think that's a great like idea. I would love to see um, kind of more so like a guided experience for people. And, and I feel like that's where we could really highlight kind of the, um, the goods of psychedelics and the goods of VR, um, as I would mm. totally love to see something that maybe isn't supposed to be like a simulated experience, but um, something that you can use alongside of psychedelics as kind of like a partner to them. I would love to see something like that happen yeah. and see how that does affect people um and see how that does affect their trips because one of the other questions that you know i've thought a lot about of is the whole like ego death right and that's kind of like the main thing that people um think of when when they're thinking about tripping and, and using psychedelics is these life-altering effects of this feeling of like oneness and unity with the world around you that you've never experienced before um and I'm just so interested in whether or not people can have that same experience and that same feeling of oneness and unity to virtual space and to a virtual environment. Because um, to me, that seems like it would be the ultimate immersion, you know, it is becoming connected. So I'm not sure if you have any thoughts on that or whether or not it's um, possible or if you've talked to anyone who experienced that in any way. It, it depends on if you're meaning uh, with or without psychedelic drugs. Uh, but um, basically, in terms of using only virtual reality to um, sort of get to this place where you are totally synchronized, your self is sort of merging with your surroundings uh, and so on, and you have no form of isolated you in relation to things. So you, you couldn't pinpoint where you were in the experience and where everything else were. I think that um, this is, <laughs> of course, not something that virtual reality technology today can offer uh, with the same kind of intensity that you can get from the psychedelic trips because this is really a point that has to be stressed. I mean, psychedelics are really, really, really powerful stuff. They can really blow you away like you couldn't imagine. So nothing like that, but there are applications within the virtual reality domain today that are trying to and using um, the virtual world to guide you in some sort of meditation um, and meditative states can be quite similar to psychedelic states as, at least when you get proficient enough in performing them so there are some applications and um, at uh, my youtube channel alt vr we are basically trying to cover all of these <laughs> various applications um, but one of them is sound self mm. and this is a really interesting uh, application it's called sound self a technodelic and basically what uh, it's doing is that it's generating uh, the environment around you uh, in psychedelic patterns based on your vo voice. Mm. So you're using your audio um, and when you are sort of humming like whoa or something <laughs> like that, um, the world around you is sort of coming into life. Yeah. And then you are getting some sort of like psychedelic principles uh, because there is a relationship between you and the external world. And it's not just your voice. I mean, you're not just hearing it, but you're also feeling it in your chest and your throat. And 
yeah, so when you're able to get into that, you may be able to focus on that relationship um, and make it an object of your consciousness as a focus exercise. So I think these things, connecting it to your voice, connecting it to your heart rate, or other like biometrical sensors like electrodermal activity and so on, um, these things can maybe make it possible for us to get into like a zone uh, by helping us in meditation. So I think that would be the closest thing we could get. And maybe one day uh, the designs will be so awesome that it can really help us to get there. But we're, yeah, we have still uh, a, lot, uh, <laughs> a lot of way to go there. A common visual theme in psychedelic strips are like mandalas. Um, and one free application, which I've um, yet to put out a video on, but I I've tried it recently, uh, actually yesterday, uh, in a flotation tank. <laughs> mm. So that was really cool. And that is called Conscious Flow. And that gives a good impression of the kind of mandalas you would experience um, in like a DMT trip, for instance. I definitely think that, um, that that there is, you know, a line between what we have right now and, you know, hopefully what we'll be able to achieve in the future. Um, and I guess that brings me to ask you is, do you think that we'll ever have programs that will be able to fully replicate, um, you know, the effects of, you know, taking a psychedelic trip while only having like a headset or, you know, like um, using technology exclusively rather than taking, um, you know, a drug in whatever way to induce that state? I think it will be possible, but... I don't think that it will be a short route. I don't think that someone who has never tried that application before can put it on and have that experience. But I think that we can design tools that allow us to be so proficient at meditating that we can get into those states. Um, because there is, I mean, right now there is only one shortcut to the uh, ego death. Uh, <laughs> we, we have many other ways in our societies with meditations and uh, other kinds of um, contemplation. But I think... I, I still think that psychedelics will be the only thing that can make you take one rip of DMT and bam, you're <laughs> gone. Right. Uh, I still think that, but I hope that we can get tools that are uh, comfortable to use, maybe uh, one hour a day that can over time get you into the zone um, mm. and actually approach some sort of non-dual states without it. I, I, yeah, I have a big faith in that. For sure. No, I think that's such an interesting way of um, looking at it is the fact that... Um, Perhaps we can't just dive into a VR experience and, you know, just that day experience a psychedelic trip, you know, the effects of that um, just from an application. But I love the idea of using other types of um, like, you know, like hypnosis and meditation and states of mind to kind of put you in that spot already. Because, you know, we know that there are people who are able to achieve like ego death without tripping, you know, they... They can, um, through these other methods, are able to um, kind of train their mind to, to see these things, like you said. Um, but I feel like in combination with VR and kind of combining those effects, that's kind of where the, the you know, the, the ticket lies. Like, that's the way yeah. that we could achieve it. And so I, I love that you mentioned that because I think that's a great way of thinking about it. But I love that you cover all of this stuff on your channel, too, because I'll definitely, you know, for all my viewers, like, I highly encourage you all to go take a look at, um, you know, alt VR and, and all of the different topics that you cover over there, because you do cover this so often and like these psychedelic kind of things, because I feel like, you know, it ties in so well to the whole philosophical aspects of VR that I know you and I are super excited about. Yeah. Um, and, and it's just such a cool, such a cool thing. And not a lot of people are talking about it, but it is something that's going to be like, more prevalent or should be talked about. And so I'm excited to um, be able to send more people your way towards that resource as well. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Talking to Wakim was enlightening. I learned so much more. And my biggest takeaway was that even if we can't fully replicate a psychedelic experience solely with a headset, we can use a headset as a tool to help achieve the life-altering effects of ego death without ever touching a drug. Finally, I reached the last step of my journey. It was time for me to try out these experiences for myself. I loaded up the game Ayahuasca Cosmic Journey, a virtual experience that takes you into the depths of the Amazon forest on a spiritual voyage full of morphing visuals. Right away, I was terrified. I actually had to close my eyes because the experience was so intense that my fight or flight response kicked in. For a while, some of my personal deepest fears of wormy creatures and internal organ canals were consuming me. I'm not exaggerating that I felt completely immersed in the deep terrors of my childhood nightmares. It was that intense for me. 
but suddenly it all changed into this profound beauty. Everything connected around me in such a way that I can't really explain in words. I think this really helped me to understand what a trip would be like for someone like me. My anxiety is something I still struggle with and have yet to come to terms with some of my deepest fears. But I also felt a little bit of relief by immersing myself in this environment. I stayed in the experience by choice and I felt like I grew because of it. So even though it was simulated, I would say that this experience had quite an impact on me. The next game I played was Sound Self, the game that Joachim told me about that visually responds to your voice. I wouldn't exactly say this game is super trippy, but at times it was quite mind-bending visually. I found it quite humorous actually because I was just making sounds for 15 minutes lying on the floor with my headset on. Would have been hard to explain if anyone walked in on me. Is this what it feels like to die? <laughs> it was much more interactive than ayahuasca, which made it more pleasant overall for me. The final game I tried was a free game called Cosmic Flow. Joachim chose this game to be the one he experienced in a sensory deprivation tank, and after playing it myself, I can see why. I'm someone who is super busy in my day-to-day, -day, but I love to take time to be alone with my thoughts and reflect on some of my deeper feelings that often get pushed aside. Usually this is in the shower or when I'm just driving or lying in bed at night, but in Cosmic Flow, I was left alone with my feelings, floating in infinite space beneath hypnotic mandalas. I remember after about 10 minutes of lying down in the game, tearing up in my headset because I had the overwhelming false memory of this place being the place that I was in before I was born. I found myself exploring the depths of my mind and consciousness that I had never been faced with before. Even though I might not have been tripping per se, I found this immersive experience to be overwhelmingly spiritual. You wouldn't think that a virtual experience could be spiritually transformative, but then again, that is cyberdelics. With all technology comes a change in culture. Changes in culture lead to new beginnings. And after all of this, I can't help but wonder which of our future greatest thinkers will be affected by the powers of VR. I think cyberdelics are starting a change that people aren't quite aware of yet. A new era of combining the spiritual with the virtual. If you enjoyed this video, then please give a big thumbs up and subscribe to the Virtual Reality Show channel. If you want to talk more about VR-related topics, then go ahead and join my Discord, link in the description. And don't forget to check out my Twitch as well. I stream three times a week, and it's the perfect way to interact with me and just overall have a fun time. Anyways, I've been your host, Fia, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye! Special thanks to my August Patreon members and virtual VIPs, Private Donuts, Score Miler, and Top Waffle. <laughs>